send down the B&Q now, just going to make sure that we get uh, one of those little monkey buckets, those little plastic buckets uh, for me. So we have got one in the back, but I want to make sure that everything's there. So it's Monday morning, and the fact is that we're heading down now to Swansea. There's a 6% chance, 7% chance of rain uh, this morning down in Swansea. And later on, the sun's coming out at maybe about 2 o'clock. The sunshine's, uh, we're going to have some sun sunshine. And uh, get my words medal this morning. We're going to have some sunshine. And tomorrow, it's going to be about 19 degrees. The thing is, we've got 125 square metres of ground to do. We're not going to be using any of those... Um, slurry grouts this morning I'm going to be using a bal adhesive uh, a bow grout from bal adhesives rather and it's a, it's a fantastic grout but you've got to get down and you've got to do it like the old tiling way so we're going to be using that this morning but we're going to attempt to get there and we're going to show our clients how conscientious we are just by turning up there's a few other things that we can do if we can grout we've got the dryer now this morning to blow any moisture or wet that's in the joints going to get that out um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be okay. So, the labour hasn't turned up today. Couldn't get hold of him on Friday. I don't know why. I just think that they just don't want responsibility or work anymore. Things have changed. People have changed. It's not like it used to be. And I never even thought I'd be saying this, but the youngsters today... Well, we're here, and the sky look a lot better. Here we are. We've got uh, some old sheets. I've got some new buckets to make sure that everything stays clean this morning. Got some new sheets as well, as well as the old sheets. And there's the wash boys, uh, because we're going to be um, on our knees, I think, today. And we've got the still dryer there and some spare batteries to make sure that uh, we dry the joints out. It is a bit wet around there now. Um, I'll show you in a sec, but it's just surface wet. I don't think there's anything really holding in the joints because of the, the falls that we have. Well, there we are. We're just putting a couple of boards down now because what we don't want to be doing is we're having to walk to the van and we don't want to be walking through this mud and carrying it all on to the paving. But what I wanted to show you is that a lot of this now, this is all clean, but this is from the tree where it's dripping down and landing on the earth here and going over. So. We got to try and get probably get this done first, I think, so it can start going off um, while the weather's good. Well, this is the grate we're going to be using this morning uh, from Bal, and it works. Bal have uh, a very, very good reputation for high performing uh, grout systems, so we're going to be using that on this patio. Let's have a look at the patio. As you can see straight away, we've got a, foot, a couple of footprints because we had to gain access to here this morning. Come and have a look at this. This is the patio we're going to be laying. Have a little look round now. I mean, that's our first step on this side. So we're not worried about the step today. But what we want to try and do, we want to try and grow as much as possible. It's nearly nine o'clock. It's not about rushing it. It's not about speed. It's about getting the job done right. And the unfortunate thing that all this was cleaned off the other day, but it's just, it is what it is. We had to gain access this morning. But come and have a look at this. This is what actually happens. Come here, come and see. So you can see over there, you can see how dirty the patio is from that side. And that's because of that tree. It's on that, gr on that ground there and it's splashing. It's just like what it does when it's splashing on the house. So. We're gonna to have to clean that off this morning, get it dry, stay off the mud, and then we're gonna to have to do it with over that side as well. So there's a bit of cleaning to do first. I'm joking. So you can see now we've given it a bit of a clean off, but we haven't used a lot of water and it will dry. It does look overcast, but it looks like as if it's gonna be okay today. Top tip, top tip when working outdoors, you've got to make sure that you get those leaves out and the little bits of twigs that fall in between the grout system. The, the joints and as I explained before this is all cleaned it was absolutely absolutely perfect uh, it was clinically cleaned all the way through and then I just want to show you this again have a look now you can actually see the dirt and the leaves so we're gonna to have to give it a wash again that's what it is and uh, we can't do nothing about that but you can see the leaves and the leaves release all these tannins and resins and if you don't get it out even when you grow out and even if it's down low with the moisture and the wicking effect it's going to draw draw those the, 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 the tannins out of the leaves and we know what tannins do they stain it's as simple as that but you've got to remember if you're a contractor or even if you're a consumer 
you should be ex uh, telling your consumer, your customer, your potential customer at the possibilities of the effects of grout outdoors in comparison to indoors. Indoors, you're cleaning every day and that's the thing about it. So it's a bit frustrating coming here this morning and seeing the dirt and the leaves on there and I know I should be getting on but I want to try and help you guys out there about what's going on and uh, this is just uh, an occupational hazard it happens we're outdoor we're affected by the elements and this is what we're dealing on a day-to-day -day basis so your customer has to take that into consideration when you're doing these sorts of jobs they have to understand that it's a different ball game from a tiler working inside and we know the high standards that tilers well some do and some don't there you go we're back to square one uh, Got a few footprints over there. But anyway, top tip uh, when grouting is so important that remember avoiding clement weather conditions. And that doesn't just mean wet weather or frosty weather. It also means the heat. Today, the temperature today is not gonna be any higher than 19 degrees, 20 degrees around there. We're starting nice and early. And yes, this is a south facing garden, but there is a little bit of shade at present while we get going from the trees. Alison and I have now decided we're not going to start in the bigger area. We're going to start in the area furthest point away and we're going to work back, aren't we? We are. And then would it make sense then to, when we, when we get to that corner there to start by the door and then work back out this way, isn't it? It does, yeah. Is that correct? <laughs> Behind every good man, there's a good woman. And I don't know where she is. <laughs> So important that we've had to wash this again as I've explained and I'll explain it again because people will pick up this video at certain points and they'll question why I've washed it down again and I'm grouted. We've put very minimal amount of water on here. We can help it's been raining this morning so we can help that but what we're doing now we're making sure that we dry the joints by pushing the water through the edges. The ground on the outside is actually lower than the paving so the water will run out it won't sit in there in the joints when we're washing. Uh, once we've dried off. So I'm going to start over this side, start drying this little piece off here now, and then Alison will be able to carry on drying the patio whilst I start grouting, but you'll be able to see the process. Okay, you can see where I was drying over the, the patio now, getting most of the water off. There's hardly anything in the joints, so that's good. Though it's a bit annoying again, cleaning it off for the third time. But it's so important that you keep it clean. But the good thing is about um, this morning is, I, was for I forgot what I was going to say now. I forgot. We'll go to take two in a minute. Are you filming? See, the sun's coming out now. Um, so important, a bit of a reflection with this as well, so should have got my glasses. The other thing I was going to say is that, um, I nearly forgot what I was going to say, oh yeah, it's not about rushing. You see with me the way I'm at, I'm sort of at a pace, all right, and that's what I'm doing. There's always a sense of urgency with everything you're doing, but certainly with the grouting, you've got to get on. Don't hang around, don't let it sit on the surface. So important. <laughs> Well, what I've got this morning is I've got two of these buckets, these builders buckets. They're great for cleaning. And what I always do is I always make sure that I've got two buckets and always clean water available. You don't want to be cleaning off with dirty water. So you've got to make sure you've got water available. We've got the hose pipe and we've got the two buckets and we've got the two wash boys this morning. Um, there are th other things out there like pedalo systems with sponges and they work perfectly, but East Empty has an ordered uh, a sponge. So. But we don't want to be using a sponge with a pedalo system with this product, with this ballot uh, right? simply because you don't want to be putting too much water on there. When you clean these sponges out, and I'll show you later, when you clean these sponges out, and I actually don't like this one. The one before was more solid with the odd little holes in there. And you really got to work hard with this. So I'm not keen on that, though they've got the extra roller. I don't like this, this mechanism here. It doesn't work so well for me. The other one, with a solid roll over the holes and work better. And your sponge, you just don't want any water on it when you're cleaning and you're wiping through. No water at all on there. We need clean. Clean, I said. Clean. So 
what we got here this is a ruby one and this is one i've been using for some time you can see where the sponges start going but this is still okay and you can i don't think with this one you can buy re replacement sponges for this this makeup here which is i don't think you, oh you no you can't some of you can some of you can't and certainly with this one i don't think you can but this is the ruby one if you look at that these actually clip out of this side and you just pull it out and you just get a new sponge this is the ruby one and they're good and that's the sort of sponge that you're looking for how important is this sponge? Quite a bit. We're just mixing the grounds up now. I'll talk about the quantities of water per um, the per bag with a, with a barrel grout system. But one thing we've got to make sure that we don't put too much water in because it's going to just dilute the product and then you're going to start losing the intensity and colour. In this case, we're using a dark grout. So, and the thing that you've got to remember is that you can never quantify, you've got to have a little bit of dampness on the top of the slab to be able to move the grout around it. And what you don't want is too much water on the top, as I explained, because you start diluting. So we always put a little bit less water in our mix to start with, and that will hopefully allow for any amounts of water on the surface. Do you understand that? Yeah. <laughs> Not, not you, but <laughs> you. You being the camera woman. Camera lady. Also, the thing you have to consider that people say to me is how much grout do you want per square meter well that'll always depend on what size your grout joints are and your slab size in this case we're using a 1.2 by 600 slab tile porcelain paving whatever you want to call it so you're going to have less joints per square meter than what you would have if you had like an 800 by 400 or a 600 by 600 etc etc so it's difficult to quantify we got to get on Okay, so have a look at this. This is this is probably how I want it. Okay, have a look at that now. Just and have a look. And just, so that's what we're looking for. Okay. And always make sure you've got those buckets nearby. There you go. That's down there. I think. I think we are good to go. Oh, do you want me to talk about my snake bite? No, no, we won't talk about the snake bite. So we've got the, the tools, as, as I've said. Um, it's always a bit concerning because you're at that point now, you've mixed that one, you've got it dry, you've got it clean. You've got no knee pads. And we've got to get going. But then we've got that. Look. And if you look at the sky, it is moving. <laughs> so that's the thing. This is what contractors, landscapes have to put up outside. Yeah, when you're indoors, you just you just can put up with your customer making your tea and coffee and giving you cakes and listening to the telly and the news. But we've got this, everything going on. The leaves, the wind, the rain, bits of dust. Yeah, you want a good day, but you don't want a hot day. So if we can get two hours without any rain on here after grouting that'll be good so if we can get the path done which is at least a third isn't it at least a third we're getting somewhere but you've got to turn up every day to do it right so basically this is exactly how the tilers do it they may do it a little bit better than me, 
But again, there's a little bit of water on there, so I've got to just take it off for that. The beauty of doing it this way, as opposed to the slurries, and you know I've used the slurry, a little bit wet there, you know I've used the slurries many, many times, but what you're actually doing, you're reducing the amount of cleaning that's required, okay? And that's the last thing you want to be doing if you're going to have, if you're going to have a hot day, and you'd want to be doing it in, on a hot day, and the cleaning, you have to go back to it, and it just takes so much time. But with this, I've pushed it in with this side, then I can turn around, and then I can drag off with this. You can use both ends, keep turning it around, keep use, look at how that comes off there. Use the trowel on all four sides, so important. And if you look now, there's hardly anything on there. So as we go back, what we've what we got to do, we've got to let it dry for a little while before we start cleaning. You can actually see on one part there, we have got a little bit of lip in, but that's because we had a change in direction of paving. And to be honest, a one mil change, a piece of lipping is not so bad. It's not exactly a trip hazard. So there we are, look at that, look at that. A twig again, we gotta watch this sort of thing. So, this is the thing that I was actually talking about. When we actually think about choosing our slab, or our porcelain product, okay? We actually got to think, look how fast you can actually come down here. I think we'll get on quite fast today. Hopefully if the rain holds off, I hope so. Um, so when you're choosing your slab, think about the grouting and how long it's going to take. When you're using these 1.2s by 600, you know, you can get quite a bit done. So let's crack on. No more footage for a while. Well, as you see, well underway. It's 9.36, 9.36, we've just started. Been going about 10 minutes, um, so we're getting quite a bit done. But again, as I say, it's not about rushing, but you want to be able to gauge what you can get done in an hour so that will you can schedule your time and you can find out. Because if it did, we can actually get it covered up. We know that we've done this part, so we've made some progress. Don't think you're going to do all of it in one go. It just won't happen and then you're going to fall into problems. So what gloves are you using here, John? Oh, is this a Q&A? Yeah. It sounds posh, doesn't it? Well, this is uh, the bow exterior adhesive. Uh, we'll give you the full sp specification in the description, okay? And um, BAL adhesives, uh, without doubt, um, spend hundreds, if not over the years, millions on research and development because what they believe in, they believe in accountability. So if you're gonna use a product, unfortunately, out there on the marketplace, there is a copious amount of grouting systems out there. Brushing grouts, two-part grouts, you've got cementitious grouts like this, uh, you've got the slurry grouts. They're all out there and they're all doing it because they're making dollar, okay? They're making dollar. And the thing is about the spal adhesives is that, you know when you go on holiday, you, with me? you know when you go on holiday and you go to that amphitheater and the Romans have built it and it's been down there like 3,000 years and you think, wow, it's incredible. And when you go home, somebody's done a, a job for you and within a couple of weeks, you've got a loose, loose slab. Certainly it's what Bal do. They want their grouting systems to last. Their paving systems, they do a range of uh, paving products, mortars, bedding mortars, slurries and grouts that are without doubt, probably the leaders, one of the leaders, I should say, in my opinion, in the industry so thanks to Bao we're putting a product down now where we feel reassured that it's going to work is that okay for a Q&A do you have any more hi hi <laughs> so 
you're using the ballad diesel here is there any particular reason why you've chosen to use their product on this porcelain well i think the feedback that i've been having for a while now i think uh, i've used other products which are good um but unfortunately they don't do the training on it some of these companies don't do the training on the grouting systems that they have and it's it's really not good at all so they're selling a product uh, and there's lots out there and there's these little videos that have online that they probably do but with certain companies they don't do nothing and as a result of it they're having lots of problems because people don't follow the instructions on the tin they just don't do it they don't read what it says on the can and um, that's not good at all the thing is about this system we know it works we know it's got integrity we know it's got longevity meaning it's going to last and it's going to work and that's the thing about it gotta make sure you mix it right though um so yeah ba and Bal invests a lot of time um sort of researching massively their products and also um, they, they do a lot of technical information behind yeah. it dave, dave rowley at, in, up in stoke there uh, they've got a, a, an academy an academy up there uh, where they do lectures and training on all their products and i think like i said is that what you want to be doing as a contractor and a consumer you want confidence in either way uh, the person that's working for you and uh, you want to be able to reassure your customer that the product's going to work and like we said Val spent so much time you know it, it is about the profit because the profit they're able to give back and learn and teach people on these products so i'm really excited this morning this system is really really simple to install you know it's great for the diy market you know you don't need years and years of experience it's all about the cleaning and <laughs> i'm quite excited this morning i'm not going to say super excited i'm super excited like they say sometimes i'm really excited about this as long as it doesn't change the weather conditions at the moment but look look at it it's going in great you've got to make sure of course that you push it well in place and then you try and clean off as much as possible and you'll see me in this video where i'll go back over that now and start the cleaning process but when i start the cleaning process i'll ensure that i don't put too much water on the surface because it's just going to dilute it so there we are so how much an area will you do before you start cleaning down? Well, I'll be honest with you, um, with a lot of companies like, like Val as well, that they'll have a recommendation, but really it's about the atmospheric conditions. Would you agree with that? Yeah. You know, greatly, because if the sun was out now, this would start cooking. You'd want to be cleaning. A little bit quicker. But when we clean, and I'll show you in, 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 in a moment, you've got to make sure that you don't go over the joints too much you want to be cleaning next to the joint but not actually on it at some point you're gonna to have to go over it but you want to clean the majority of the paving first of any residue this remaining before you start cleaning the top because you're just going to dilute the surface <laughs> now go away because I'm busy and I got to get on really when you think about it I'm an independent I share my videos hoping that it would help people. And what I would say, if you've got any questions regarding this product, and as I said, we'll share it in the description, um, what you can do, you can just go to the, the BAL website and you can just drop them an email, go online, have a look at BAL Tiling. They're on Instagram, they're on social media, and uh, you can go out there and have a look. Look at that, look how it comes off. Absolutely beautiful, look. Yeah, because it's not just landscapers they do products for. Is is it indoor tiling as well, isn't it? Yeah, you know, um, a lot of tilers will have their preference of the products that are actually used. Um, but there's so many products out there, and one thing that I wouldn't be doing, and one thing there's no way I would do. It. I did it once before, and I shouldn't have done it. But in that case, we knew that in ten years' time you could take it out and redo it. But I used a brushing grate once on a porcelain product, and because the customer liked the grouting system, the brushing grout, it's got a porosity value, lays the water through, they wanted it because they liked the colour and I advised accordingly and you should never, you've got to reduce, though this is a, a cementaceous grate, it's got some porosity, it's not like those brushing grates where it just goes all the way in. So, you know, I'm not saying don't use it, 
I'm saying it's not ideal to use it, you know, because eventually it will fail. This will last a lot longer. Even when you're cleaning with this, you're not gonna be washing all your grout out because it goes off absolutely solid. So despite your advice, the customer went against that advice because they liked the particular grout. Yeah, <laughs> and what do you do? You can advise and... True. Yeah, that's it. So one of the questions we get asked all the time, John, is how big should the joint be? In size, in width? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, look, a lot of people have an opinion about this, but really one of the things we have to take in consideration is what the recommendations for the grout is with companies like, Bat I think, MapEye, don't want you to go over 10 mil. We've got to mention them about 10 mil. And obviously the wider the joint, the more you're going to actually do. And of course, the way you lay your paving underneath, if you've got a really undulated bed and it's not fully compacted, that's why I use a semi-dry mix. I lay the, the, the paving product dry, then I take it back up, then I fill any voids in a, with a semi-dry, and then there's no voids underneath, only in the joint. So when I lay the slab tight, the previous lay slab or tile again, I push it down so there's no mortar in between. So that's one good thing. And then you've got a nice clean joint to fill up. But in respect of width, my... My favourite size, which I think that actually works, because it allows you to get the grout in as well, is actually three mil, okay? I've seen people go in a mil and a half. You can get a mil and a half spacer. I just think that's just far too small. And if you're using like 10 mil for, for a porcelain product, it's, it's just stupid, really. I just, you just don't want to be doing it. But we see it, don't we? We see it on a regular basis. We see lots of horror shows out there where people have done things. So you can see, um, have you got a time check? Do you know what time is now? So it's 9.36, just a little while ago. We have about 20 minutes. This is taking just about half an hour to do. So like I said, it's not about timing, but you can see how much you can do in a short period of time. So for me, when I look at this now, I actually think, well, to take that path now up to where the main patio is, I believe by the time I get up there, this will be ready for cleaning. Okay, this will be ready for cleaning. And I think the atmospheric conditions will allow me to do that. If it was a lot hotter now, I would start the cleaning process now. But look at it, it's cool, isn't it? And that's mm. what you want. You don't want your grout drying too fast. It's perfect to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, at the moment. I'm actually enjoying, are you filming? Yeah. That's right. I'm actually enjoying the way you're filming this morning because it's fast and furious. People can actually pick up on things. They can actually see me work and they can ask their questions. And there's there's nothing hidden, no hidden agendas on it. Hey, should we do a live? Should we go live? I thought about going live. Are should you we the... do it? Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. I, you're going to ask a question for goodness sake. I will now. Loose lab. <laughs> I've just done that. No, it's not loose. Not loose. Um, yeah, also, when you when you you grout and make Hang sure... Hang on, I haven't asked you the question oh, okay. yet. Go ahead. We haven't planned this, have we? No, I was just going to ask you the question. Is that... Okay. So, I've seen when you're working, when you're laying the slab, um, how you make sure that the mortar is finished correctly at the end of each slab. Yeah, and correctly meaning you want it nice and smooth, so you And don't... the reason is... Well, you can have loads of, like, grout going down. You don't want it too thick. You want it all... You want everything to be consistent. When you're laying your paving, every layer, every the dig, the substrate, the um, the, the dig, I meaning the substrate should be nice and flat. Your 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 sub base should be nice and level. And if you're using a lee mix like I do, that should be nice and level. Everything should be nice and level. I don't mean level to a bubble. I mean flat, perfectly flat, so you don't have any undulations. Because when you start having those undulations, it's just not good. And each layer should be the same, shouldn't it? So if you have a fall on yeah, the so, layer, the, so, the, the additional layer yeah, should so have when the you, same fall. Let me get a word in. <laughs> yeah, so when you're laying your, your paving, is that your, your dig, your dig should re reflect the finished level. You're making me look right claim on me. <laughs> There we go. Look, nice. Look how it's come off. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. And that's the beauty about doing a path is you, you're not trying to get it all in everywhere. You can clean off as you go. I can't wait to start the cleaning process because I'll show you how easy it is. Do you think you could do that at home as well? <laughs> I have to 
say this grout doesn't frighten me to death like some of the, the slurry grouts that goes over the top and the, the whole paving is just yeah, but covered. To, yeah, but to be fair, that some of those slurry grouts are really good. You know, they do work, but... Yeah, I know that. I'm just saying they do frighten me to death, though. Yeah. And we, I, we, we get a lot of questions on that, that people are scared to use them, aren't they? Yeah, look, listen... <laughs> The fact is, again, the fact is that they're a good system. They really are good and they do work only if people know how to use it. And, and like I said, the, the companies that supply them don't always necessarily. There's, there's the odd instructional video online that you'll see and um, they'll give instructions on the back of the tin, whatever, like that. It's n there's no better training than having somebody there that will show you their way of doing it uh, when they've done it time and time again like so i'm rushing a little bit now so would you say um a training course would be handy yeah i've got one and i'm mr miyagi no i'm not no i'm not listen we, no we are we are seriously looking at doing training courses yeah, on these things and, yeah. and that's just organically grown because of the amount of queries that we get and the amount of people that ask us to do these courses and not just for the trade but for the diy as well yeah yeah absolutely because i tell you what there's nothing that's disheartening for a contractor or a consumer a, a customer when they've had uh, a, a job done and you know nothing's cheap no more when you look at inf inflation and how it's gone through the roof etc you know it's just not cheap and the last thing you want when you've sort of saved all your money for your garden it's it's your project you're looking forward to it and then the contract has got to that point where um, it's all gone really well and it's all done good it's, everything's perfect the paving's laid great and they come to the grout in and it just gets ruined doesn't it it does it just and, gets and the, th the thing is these products are not cheap are they that they so i think you know we've looked at it for some time now and probably half a day a day maximum training course on something like this on choosing the correct product yeah. and how to use yeah. it would be enough wouldn't it absolutely you know and I, I think these videos out but and they do help but i think we still need to be there you know it's just not the same completely is it like you know no and it's not. Uh, so if we need to get on it really, don't we? Yeah, so if anybody's looking for some sort of training or help, let's just say we're offering the help, aren't we? Yeah. Um, will there be a charge? Well, of course there's got to be a charge because if I'm showing somebody something, but if we can get like maybe a dozen people to come along, then it's okay, we can charge a reasonable fee for it and, and sort of help people, isn't it? I don't want to see people. Yeah, it's time, isn't it? You yeah. know, we're so busy, but I think it's something that we need to get on because Look, I, more I need and more to people... I need to earn, earn a living. Everybody's time is money, and uh, you know, so let's work something out. If, if you're actually thinking about, you want to do a bit of learning and finding out before you grate your patio. If you want some online learning, I suppose on a one-to-one, -one, I suppose yeah. if you want to Zoom me, you can actually do that. That may help you. And or, I think the key as well is also choosing the right product as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, look, look at we know. There's a demand for it. We know there's a demand for it because of the copious amounts of phone calls that we have on a regular basis about this this problem because it is a problem. However, however you look at it, there's some guys out there can. I just I just really feel it. It's, it's the companies, the manufacturers, and I think that, like I said, Bow, they do their bit. They do their bit. But it's a bit like going into a sweet shop, isn't it? And you have all these lovely sweets on the shelf and which one to choose <laughs> yeah because there's so many products around me yeah no no that's right you know there is so many products around it and trying to understand it and make no make no bones about it is that i get confused as well uh, on it you know and when we hear those words industry vernaculars like cementation scrout grapes with porosity we talk about wicking we talk about um ballooning and staining etc um, uh, and, and, it's frightening. and also which product to use for the pavement, so if you've got natural stone paving, you'd use a different grout yeah. as what you would use for porcelain paving. Absolutely. We can actually even talk about cross joints, how they are not a British standard. And if we land like, that there. No! <laughs> nothing wrong with a good old cross joint. There you, you go. You are joking. <laughs> uh, okay. So I just saw you doing something, John. The sponge, clean it, keeping it clean as you go, making sure no bits of 
dust or grout gets onto the bottom of the sponge. Oh yeah, yeah, you've got to make sure you, you just clean off as, as you go, like, you know, and it's not drying. So what I'll do it in a moment, I've nearly reached the end of this path, I'll give this a good clean and then I'll work back and I'll clean this, I'll work back and clean the joints as I go again before I actually start thinking about um, about using the sponge on here. So, because you do want these joints to be, you do, you've got to just catch it at the right time. And, uh, and that's why you shouldn't do too much that you can handle. That's the secret, I think. Yeah, I don't know if, if like this morning, whether I've done too much now or not, but how I find that out is when I start cleaning. But what I won't do, until th this area is perfectly clean, I won't start moving on to the other part of the patio. And I, I feel that this is what I can handle. If we look along here, I think there's probably about 30, maybe a bit more, 35 square meters on this area. Maybe, I'm not quite sure. And um, you think how quick it's been ta it's taken to do. So. Yeah, so it's, it's been a cloudy day, it's about 19 degrees, and this has taken us about an hour. So I'd say that's just about right. I think, uh, to be honest, um, I've used one bag. Yeah. One bag, which is more than enough. It's going right the way down in, in the joint. Look how I'm pushing that in there. This is how you should be doing it, really. It's like that, pushing it on. So you, you reduce the amount of cleaning, push it on. It's hard on your wrist. That's why sometimes you just need a professional to do it or somebody who's strong who can actually do it as a DIYer. If you've got too much going on, it can actually, it's quite hard on, on your wrist and on your knees. And I should be using a small mat or in some knee pads. Somebody's going to say something about it. But you asked me about your knee pads this morning, didn't you? I did. And what did you say? I said, I'll be okay. bag that we've bag that we've mixed we're actually we've probably got about a third of it left now and uh, I'm keen to use that up simply because I feel that we can gauge what we need to grow in the future in these conditions so we can say well we can use it we can use a bag we know that how far it's gonna go before we start cleaning because I still think now even now you'd be surprised though that looks as if it's drying in the joint it's not dried yet so on the surface it's not dried and it will come off quite easy and we don't want to put like, like like i said lots of water so i'm just tempted now to actually try and get use what i've mixed up get it in and you've got to remember is if you wasn't filming now you'd be grouting as well so this would have been in so two guys using oh, <laughs> two guys don't have any girls work with me do i <laughs> So two guys, okay, two guys. Okay. Two guys using this now would would have had it would have had it done, and it would have done it would have went twice as quick. So, well, one and a half times because the other guy wouldn't have been as fast as what I am, or as messy. Do you think it's going to be okay, John, that it's not going to dry out too fast today? So you're asking me if I'm confident in that, whether I should go back and clean that now before I use this up? Yeah. I'm confident, 100%. And because it's shady and cool? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's absolutely. And that's the biggest, that's a perfect uh, response, really, because what happens is when the temperatures rise, um, you know, like the other week, I couldn't believe that there was people that was going to go out and actually grout in those conditions because even if you've got the grating done fast the thing is it's just drying too fast you know years ago when we used to concrete an oversight and in some cases if, if, the, if it was too high in a foundation if the foundation was quite high up and the sun was getting to the concrete it didn't matter so much but the last thing you want really is you'd want your concrete at any point to crack so what we used to do we used to have to water it down and what people have got to try and understand and uh, I had a funny, a funny response the other day when I actually said about cement heats up. Cement does heat up, it gets hot, it gets warm by itself. 
even without the sun. So this is why landscapers get bad backs. And a lot of you will say, why aren't you bending down, John? And why aren't you on your knees? Yeah, well, because <laughs> if I get on my knees, I can't get back up. <laughs> So today, John, before we done all this, we... We, um, we shot for we a bacon. <laughs> no. Bacon roll. Shh, shh. Yeah, so we, we dried all the joints. We made sure there was no water left in the joints. Okay, so you're going through a checklist now, aren't you? Two seconds. Let me finish your question. Right, okay, Stop okay. interrupting. So we made sure there was no water in the joints. Yeah, no water in the joints. If we hadn't have done that, what would have been the consequence? Well... Listen, when Mary, Mary Berry makes that sponge cake, she knows, she, she quantifies the exact amounts, the flour, the baking powder, the sultanas, the lemon, the salt. All right, go back to the question then. Yeah, but she does, she quantifies, but she also knows um, the amounts of water that's going in there. So what would happen is basically, you're, it's just becoming soup, isn't it? So if you don't dry those joints up, you're, you know, you've got a specification to work with on the bag a guidance or what they recommend you should be doing and as i said mixing will always depend or the amounts that will always do that you mix up will always depend on the the atmospheric conditions that you're working and like i said it's nice and cool now so we can mix up a fair amount to crack on with but if you've got water in there it's just going to dilute it so you're going to get discoloration of your grape but remember remember this is outdoors all right it's gonna you're gonna get it's gonna be affected by the leaves the rain the grass okay you think of the chemicals that are actually in grass okay that's what people don't understand and um you know when you know when, it, when you're walking on on paving with when you've mowed a lawn how green it goes so this this patio is being battered so you want a product that's going to stand up to it but things do change in color and remember if you're inside Look how many times people wash the floor in the day. So like I'll, you. I'll just summarize. Look how many times you wash the floor I do, in the day. I do. So I'll summarise. The reason why you don't want water in your joints is because it'll dilute the product. There you go. Sorry, Mary. <laughs> As you can see, I've started the cleaning process. We had a little tentative moment then where we thought it was going to rain. And if it rains just a little bit and it sits on it, it's not good at all. And we just have to leave it for a while and let the joints go off. Um, I'm going to get on very quickly now, so you can appreciate that we've got to try and get it done. But I think that as the day goes on, it's going to be uh, a lot better. But we have got some sheets ready just in case. So what I'm doing, OK, I have very little amounts of water on here. OK, hardly anything. So what I do is I go down the joint first, not actually on the joint, next to the joint. And what I'm doing, marks like that, I'm sort of breaking up and diluting that. And again, on this side, OK, and then back down this side and back down. Now, if I want, now I can go over the joint like so, because I've cleaned off the left and the right side of the joint. I'm not even gonna wash this off now again. And the reason for it, in this situation, if I wash this off, I'm gonna be adding more water to the surface. We want as much as concentration of the color. We're looking for a dark gray, but we know with the UV it's gonna get lighter, but we wanna try and keep it as dry as possible. Now we know that's all loose, okay? It's broken it up, okay? Diluting that, but we're not diluting the surface. Again, going down, you can just see the marks from the rain coming on here now. Just a little bit, and that was from before. So we go down the joint, just like that. Not on the joint, just down by the side, running parallel, and on this side, like so. Very little pressure, isn't it? Yeah, Jeff? very little pressure. Hardly any water on there at all. You don't need it. Now I can go at a 45 along there Very and I'll come back over and what I'm going to do is once I've got through so far I'll be able to come back through it would have gone off a little bit more by then and then I can start cleaning as I go so just watch this again down the down the line like so not actually on the joint along here again this is how I do it this is how I prefer to do it down here hardly any water at all on there then I can go over the joint just once and back. Now I'm going to put some water on. So if you have a look at this now, I actually dip it in. I'm not impressed with, the, with these rollers. They changed them. You get as much out as possible. Got to try and get it out and that should last quite a few slabs. Again, if we look down here, we go over like so and then back down along the joints. On this side, get that little 
we go down here, back down again, and again, because there's a little lump just there. And I'm, not, I'm not on the joint now at this point, and back on this side. Then I can come at a 45, like that. So it's broke it all up. And it's gonna be easy to clean as it dries now. The joints stay a lot better. Right, the thing is we're at this point now and it's starting to go off now, which is absolutely fine. If you look at that, I've loosened it up and I can go over the joints now because that grouts again a little bit harder. It's, it's starting to go off. So what I can do now, I can just go over here like so. That's loosened it. There's no concentration of any grape whatsoever. Yeah, we've got a haze on. You can see my handprint on there. That's absolutely fine. But our concern is at the moment is to loosen up the concentrated part of the grape. So when we look at that now, we can come back here. We look at this. I'm in no panic whatsoever. And I can go over here like so. No sun out, not baking conditions. There you are, little swirls. Loosen up. Yes, it's causing a haze. That's absolutely fine because we're going to go over it again. You've got to clean. That's the thing about it. You've got to clean. Go over it. Empty your water. Go over it again and again. And this is where people go wrong, isn't it? Yeah. That's the... why they're left with a haze over the top. Yeah. You know, but you can get the haze off if it's a haze. But when it's a concentrated part of, of the grout, see a little, little divot there. You can just take that little, little what we call pitting just on there. That's absolutely fine. Go over it. You know, I can look at those little pits on there, maybe little air bubbles, but that's absolutely fine. That will remain seamless. Go over there now, All right, go down there again. That's absolutely fine. I'm going to spend some time on it. The thing is, I think, like I said, where people go wrong is basically when they've got a big area to do. I haven't even put any water on that sponge since we've gone across three or four slabs now. So if we go over here now again, and by not putting the water on there, you're not diluting that joint okay look that's worked it loose now if i do want to clean that now now i can put it in the water now i can wring it out make sure that you wring it out make sure you wring it out and i can go at a 45 like that so the sponge round there you are it's easy it's as easy as that. Now, what I'll do for about three or four slabs now, I'll wring that and wash that one out now again. Not worry about that haze on there, because I'm going to go over and over and over it till it's clean, till it's spotless. And that's what you have to do. If you want something to look good, you just got to work for it. One, two, three. Over there like that. On that side. 45. There we are. It's off. And that's just become a haze. Even if I was to leave that now for tomorrow, that would come off tomorrow. With a good clean, it would come off, but I'm not. I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna clean it at a later date. I wanna get round, I wanna clean what I've done, and then we can look at it and we can assess if we're gonna carry on with the next bit. We've gotta look at the conditions. The sun's coming out, temperature's rising now, isn't it? You yeah, can feel it. Yeah, it's getting a bit warmer now. A little bit warmer now. So you need to be but extra we... careful. Absolutely. But we've got time on our side now, haven't we? So I'd say it's probably going up to about 21, 22 degrees now. Totally, yeah. And you know when I say we've got time on our side? Now, we had time on our side anyway, didn't we? Yeah. Didn't we? But we know that when we come back down here tomorrow, or me to do the cleaning, that soft brush, maybe a little bit of fairy liquid, don't use any chemicals at that point, a little bit of fairy, li li fairy liquid. In fairy liquid, I'm not getting paid by fairy liquid to say this, but there's sodium hypochlorite, which is chlorine. And you just need a little bit, soft brush, agitate the surface, and then just wash it off. It's simple. And it, it really is, is literally simple. a drop. Yeah, absolutely. A drop. Right, well, I'm gonna just show you. We were just talking about the cleaning. You know, when you start the cleaning process, if you've cleaned half decently, the rest should just come off anyway. And uh, is it hard work? Yeah, of course it's hard work, but if you're doing your patty yourself, if you're DIY, the likely you're never going to do it for another 20 years. So put the effort in now. So I've just cleaned the sponge out there. Now, have a look at, just come and have a look closely down on here, Al. Have a look from above. You can see where the grout lines are, where the dirt is. So if we go over on there now and just loosen that, there and there, there's nothing there now, is there? No. Nothing there. And down here, like so, 
okay, we know that there is dirty water on all over. So if you look at this now, let's get that bit off. Look, it's easy, isn't it, really? That little, odd little lump there. But stay with me a sec. So now we put it in. Let's just really wring it out. Get the water out of it. You really don't want to be using much water at no. all here. So if we look like that now, and then we just wipe through like that. Look how clean that is now. There is nothing wrong with that. And I can turn the sponge around and I can do the same again there. And look, I'm going to go over that again, but look how clean it is. There's nothing on there. You know, there's no need to have the haze and the grout on the surface like we see on a regular basis. You know, you know the ones that actually send me videos and clips of plateaus that have failed. And the reason they failed is because people haven't got on their hands and knees. And there's no need to get on your hands and knees. If I had that pedal system today, it would have been a lot more easier, but it's not here and uh, I'm not complaining. So over again, this is what we do. Go over. But after we've done this process, you'll be cleaning again, won't you? Yeah. We don't just leave, this is cleaned no. and cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. Yeah, absolutely. You just keep going over it. You know. And I think that's where a lot of people make mistakes. Is they do, they might do this process and think that that's it, it's done, which is when they're left with the haze all the way over the is top. Is that what you think? Yeah. You think they do this and that's it, yeah? It's possibly some do, yeah, we I know by the videos no. and the contacts that we get, people send us regular photos of why have I got this haze? And it's yeah. because they've probably just done this process and left it and not cleaned it again. No, I think you're right. And you know, if you look at, look at that now, right? That's off now, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, there's going to be a haze of it, but there's not a concentration of grout no. anywhere. I haven't dipped that, that sponge back in, so I've reduced the water. So every time you put water in, you're going to dilute it. We've got to keep emphasizing this. So if I wipe like that now, look, just come and have a little close look. Look, you can actually see two wipes on there. All right, it's gone. So if we do this, and that's been on there for nearly an hour. Hour and a half. Do you think so? Hour and a half in cool temperature on a cloudy day, so it's about 19 degrees. As we've said that all the way throughout this video, if it was a hot day with sunshine, it'd be less time. So you really have to take into consideration the weather and the, temp the temperature. You'd be taken over before long. <laughs> Look, we'll go over there again. Are you happy with, with the process of how we clean it? Because you're quite sort of like OCD yeah a bit cleaning and uh, you know yeah happens. absolutely this is just the first stage of cleaning there'll be a second third and fourth phase of cleaning yeah. and we'll do all that today we won't be leaving this until tomorrow we'll do all this today yeah absolutely get that little bit off there look, look that's that's gone it's gone so if you'd left this until tomorrow John what would have happened I wouldn't get paid <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't get paid. It would have uh, been ruined, wouldn't it? The whole yeah, patio. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just think that people just... Think, they don't oh. understand grouting, some people. No. Look, just turn the camera around. Just to, we, we've got time. We can do that brick edge in a moment. It's absolutely, absolutely fine. Just come back and have a look down here. Look, if you just go back a bit so our viewers can actually see. You can see that's reasonably clean. We know we're going to go over it again. And then you come down here. I've moved quite fast through here. I haven't put copious amounts. I've broke it up, you see. It's about breaking up with little effort, okay? And if you come through over here, look. Come over here. I've gone through there quite fast with that one. But I've spent a little bit more time on cleaning here. You can see how it's come off. There's no concentration of grout. But I'm going to be cleaning this again. And we've got to make the point, once I've cleaned this now where I've grouted, I'm going to empty that water. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to Phase go to a cleaner. Yeah, absolutely. It's just got to be done. So, I'm not going to put this back in the water until it starts getting a bit drier because I'll keep saying this, it's just going to dilute your grout and we know that the grout can get affected outside with everything going on but we'll just loosen it up now. Look, look at this. And everybody has their preferred way of cleaning but you can see it's coming up, there's just a haze on there now but like I said we're going to go over it but we're going to get everything what we've done with this water and this sponge and then we're going to clean it out and we're going to go over again before we start doing whoops before we start doing any more grinding so this is phase one yeah phase one yeah that's so our cleaning process you may have three or four phases but I think I think phase two will do the trick
Hey. Asking me to do something, isn't it? Right. Last two rows. We're getting there, aren't we? Yeah. Thank God. I've worked hard, haven't I? Yeah. 